Hi, this is the fourth video reviewing general relativity in a bottom-up fashion. In this video, space-time itself moves outside a spinning black hole. But first, we look at a particle as a three-dimensional breather, a pattern of space-time, rather than a little ball in space-time. Let's get started. First, let's think about what it means to be a particle in space-time. We'll do so by going back to the breather from the second video. We can think of a one-dimensional string as being made of atoms. Two neighboring atoms are attached by a spring. The spring has a natural length. If we stretch it, it tries to pull the atoms back together. If we compress the spring, it tries to push the atoms apart. This force may be linear, which means that it's proportional to the stretch. In that case, we have the linear wave equation with the waves propagating at the speed of the medium, c. If the spring force has a nonlinear component, we can additionally get a breather at a fixed location. This breather stays in place, but as we have seen before, breathers can move at any speed less than c. Now let's add a second dimension and a third dimension. It looks a bit messy, so let's get rid of the springs and zoom out. Just like in one dimension, let's have the atoms move in a localized wave, a three-dimensional breather of trapped energy. As before, we can think of this pattern as a particle. Now let's zoom out and let's think of the atoms not as atoms in the periodic table, but as atoms of space, microvoxels. Our particle is then not separate from space. Instead, it's made of the same fabric, the same substrates as space itself. And when a voxel moves, the pattern inside, the particle, moves along, even if it's at rest with respect to space. And when we deform voxels, as we have done many times, the atoms of space are simply more tightly packed, but we have the same number per voxel. Does this sound like metaphysics? Well, maybe, but our goal is to create some vivid pictures that are compatible with relativity and quantum mechanics, and to get a feel for how particles move in space-time, especially when space-time moves and expands. Also, in quantum field theory, particles or excitations in a field. Let's connect the visual of a pulsating particle to our Schwarzschild spacetime. We can think of the pulse rate as the wristwatch time of the particle. When we drop this pattern that we call a particle, the pattern contracts along with the voxels. In addition, the pulse rate slows down because it gets closer to the mass, which is general relativity but also because it moves relative to the voxels, which is special relativity. The particle pattern slows to a halt at the event horizon, just like the light flash in the previous video. From now on, we won't show the pulsations of particles, but please remember this visual, where the particle not so much lives inside space-time, but is a pattern of space-time. Now let's look at our first space-time that is not static, the Kerr space-time. Similar to the Schwarzschild space-time, it appears outside a spherically symmetric mass, but in this case, the mass rotates. And when it rotates, it drags along the space-time outside, so that the voxels themselves orbit the planet or the black hole. We can see that inner rings spin faster than outer rings, so there's a shear where rings slip and slide against each other. Next, we'll drop the particle straight down, which means that it has no angular momentum. What happens? Well, the shearing space-time pulls sideways on the particle so that it moves along with the voxels and it follows a spiral path. If the sphere is a black hole, then just like before, the radial velocity goes to zero, but space itself moves sideways so the particle will orbit an infinite number of times. Now, even though the particle orbits, it still has zero angular momentum. Why is this? Well, first of all, Angular momentum is conserved and is started with zero. And second, because a particle moves sideways with space, the only relative motion is the radial direction. Now, instead of dropping a particle, we'll drop these metal rods. Just like the particle, we'll drop them straight down so they have zero angular momentum. When they fall, they eventually touch and get stuck at some radius, making a ring. This ring spins, but has zero angular momentum. 
like the particle, it spins at the same rate as space-time itself. It's an important special case, and we'll look at it more closely in a second. Now, you may wonder if space-time really spins, or if it just looks that way, because of some bad choice of coordinates. Well, there are some real physical effects. For example, we can put a laser pointer on the ring and let it shine outward. We can then detect the laser beam far away and see that it sweeps around in a cycle. Let's look at the tangential speed of light, perpendicular to the radius. Let's zoom in a bit and add an optical fiber so that light can propagate along a ring. We'll have a flash maker and a detector at the opposite end. Light flashes move at the same speed clockwise and counterclockwise relative to the moving voxel. So from our viewpoint, light will seem to go at different speed in the two directions. A photon is a particle of light. So just like the breather, we can think of it as a pattern that moves in a moving spacetime. Notice that the flashes are evenly spaced and that they arrive at the detector at the same time. This is because the ring moves at the same speed as spacetime. Therefore, we could add clocks around the ring and synchronize them. This is similar to the non-rotating ring in the video on special relativity. That ring also has zero angular momentum. As we move closer to the black hole, space-time moves faster and the speed of light slows down. And at some point, the speed of light is the same as the speed of space-time. What happens then? Well, the flash that tries to go against the motion of space-time will look suspended from our viewpoint. This radius is called a static limit. As we move even closer to the black hole, inside the static limit, light can no longer keep up with the moving space-time. All light is swept along with the motion of space-time. It's no longer possible to stay still. Now let's shift our viewpoint to an observer who is located on the ring, so that the ring seems to be at rest. The ring still has zero angular momentum, so it's at rest relative to the hypervoxels at the same radius. If the observer has a spaceship, that spaceship is full length and can synchronize its clocks. From the video on special relativity, we know that a spaceship that moves relative to space-time will contract and its clocks will slow down and desynchronize. And this is true in both directions. If we now shift back to the faraway viewpoint, then the spaceship that moves relative to space-time is actually standing still, but the three effects remain. In other words, any motion relative to a ZAM ring will suffer the three effects of special relativity. For example, if the ring itself is slowed down so that it stands still, it will contract along itself. So if it's going to remain at the same radius, we need to add some extra material to hold it in place. So a static ring has more circumference than a ZAM ring that moves. Textbooks sometimes get this wrong. Since we change the rotation, the ring now has angular momentum, even though it's standing still. And now that space-time moves relative to the ring, light will travel at different speed in the two directions, and so we cannot synchronize clocks all the way around the ring. We look at one more case of frame dragging in the curved space-time, but first let's point out that we have been picturing voxels to be rather large. We should really think of the shearing of space-time as being continuous. Now, if you stand still on a ring, holding a stick, and then move the stick upward to where space-time spins at a different rate, then space-time grabs onto the stick and pulls it sideways, just like the falling particle that we saw before. So to keep the stick with you, you have to apply a force in the opposite direction. Note that space-time only tries to pull on the stick while it moves along the radius. Once you stop the stick, you no longer need to pull on it sideways, nor do you feel a force while you stand still on the ring. In the next video, we'll look at wormholes that provide a shortcut between distant points in space, and how a wormhole can be used as a time machine. I'll see you there. For more videos, go to physicsisnotweird.com and I'm Aiden Bernander.